Welcome home, Bitcoin Truth Seekers. It is Tuesday, January 11th, 4.15 p.m. here in the Arizona desert. And I think Bitcoin is looking good. All right. So BitcoinDailyView.com, got more for you there. That's where we usually um, keep things or I keep things. Uh, it's a good place to um, find out uh, indicators and such that I mentioned here. So a lot of stuff that we talk about is here. All right. Check it out. Um, looking at the uh, crypto universe in squares here at Coin360, we're seeing a mix of green and red in the market today. At this very moment, I can kind of dig that. It is definitely a nice thing to see. Let me also check that on an app here. <laughs> Sorry, you can't see it. But yes, in general, this is actually pretty accurate. So we're looking good. Um, mix of green and red in the market. And the reason that is, is uh, Bitcoin is looking pretty good and it's taking ETH with it. And a lot of also doing quite well at the moment also. So let's rock through and check those out. Crypto Fear and Greed Index is looking like 21 right now. Well, better than 10 or maybe 10 is better because when we've had these those low 10s, we had it four times last year. And each time it was, it was followed by a boom, a good run up. So we were at 10. Now we've gone to 21. And well, let's see if that usual boom happens. So looking at spot trading on Binance, uh, we got 15.9 or basically, basically you can say 16 billion in volume last 24 hours down 23% last 24 hours. Definitely. That just ain't much volume at all. You want to have at least 30 for the market to be doing something. Yep. The market kind of is. Uh, so looking at derivatives, uh, 53 billion down uh, 23% last 24 hours. So eh, volume, not so great. Uh, derivatives, not quite as bad as spot spot, really, really in the potty and heading down. Um, so well, there you go. Wish I could tell you Bitcoin trading volume explicitly, but I just have not found a good way to see that. Um, looking at um, open interest across the big exchanges, we're at about 13.9 billion open interest and uh, open interest change last 24 hours. It's plus 2.5%. So open interest, as you can see, is moving up just, at, well, no, it's about sideways, moving up ever so slightly. All right, looking at the bulls versus bears, duking it out here. These are 10-second candles. This is a glorious thing, as you can see recently. Today, we've definitely had some uh, longs and shorts getting wrecked. I've been watching them. They are really, really wanting something to happen here. I think oh, that looks like a, that is like an 849. Anyway, uh, anyway I will not belabor it. So look, look at that sudden dump. Boom. That wasn't too pretty, huh? Anyway. Uh, they're battling it out. I'm watching. Uh, they definitely want to push it one way or the other. Um, but overall, it looks like Bitcoin is moving up. So let's look at longs versus shorts sentiment. 66% long, 33% shorts. Not bad for Bitcoin uh, on a volatile day like today. That's on Binance. And then for Ethereum, 69% long, 30% short. So we have a long bias, but not incredibly long bias. Check this out. It's kind of groovy. Makes me very, very happy to see. All right. Uh, Bitcoin versus USDT here on the daily chart. We have definitely a green candle today. That's looking very, very good. And what's very exciting is the tangent of the MACD has flipped positive. As you can see, the blue line there is the MACD. The red is the signal. The blue, the blue line has the blue line has ticked up. Definitely, you can see right here the histogram is closing positive. So we have a positive tangent on the MACD looking towards a a positive cross. Let's look at the two-hour MACD. That oftentimes does have a value. Oh, yeah, two-hour MACD, nice and positive. So how about the 12? 12-hour MACD just flipped positive. So anyway, definitely have a bullish MACD. I definitely like seeing that. So I think we're going to see a lot of uh, confidence in the market at this moment. Green candle today. Oh, we are very far from the tenant moving average, but we are... Firing up a pretty good green candle today. Let's see how that rolls. Looking at this 15 minute chart, as you can see for quite a while, by these uh, blue merit, these blue blue diamond merit badges, they mean that you cross the 200 and the 314 moving averages within one or two candles. So boom, we can see that. That's very very bullish. The little pink squares those show a 200 moving average cross above. 
So basically, we have been that is actually very, very bullish. The 15 minute chart, but you pull in a little bit of time here, and you can see it has really, really been wanting to move. Those are very, very bullish signals. It's a very, very bullish place to be going sideways. Anyway, got a slight dump, came down to the uh, RSI cave bottom, and then bam, took off, hit the RSI cave top. Now we're going sideways. That's nice. We're above the 10 moving average on the 15 minute chart. And the indicators look really, really good. So looking at a 45-minute chart, we've basically been above the 200-moving uh, average on the 45-minute chart for about going on like nine hours now. Once you've been above 12 hours, it starts to seriously uh, denote some traction. Then you're looking at 24 hours, even better. So we've had a 200-moving average cross on the two on the 45-minute chart. Yeah, 200-moving average cross on the 45-minute chart. In general, these indicators are looking very, very good. Uh, Bitcoin pushed hard to get there, and it does not show like it's overwhelmed from doing that. So this is something I like seeing. I like little moves like this. We'll see what happens. Um, I mean, note this. It has been on a downwards trend for quite a while. Finally had a strong break above the 10 moving average. Now it may range between the 200 and the 314, the purple one here for a little bit, or maybe just crank right through it. We shall see. It's all about keeping traction above that tenant moving average. And then also do note this. You could kind of say we've been in a downtrend. And if you run it like this, if you go like that, uh, you know, we may not quite have broken out of a downwards trend yet uh, looking at it like this. But we are dang close, you know. So these indicators look strong. Let's see how it continues to roll. Uh, Bitcoin looking good. What excites me, like I say, eight or nine, hour, eight or nine hours, we have been above the two moving average cross with a strong break above. Let's see if we can if we can see that 12 hours. Definitely, I think if we can stay above their 12 hours, that's going to start denoting more and more bullishness. The longer we stay above the two moving average, more in general, Bitcoin will be moving upwards on the 45-minute chart. And I like seeing that. So let's see if we can do 12 hours, then 24, and then 48. Let's see what happens. This is a new break above, but so far it looks pretty good. Wish I could tell you what the Bitcoin trading volume explicitly was. I can't. I can't see it easily enough. Um, but I definitely can say that, uh, you know, looking at spot trading, um, that volume is just pure potty. So I have a sneaking suspicion that maybe this is a whale play that's actually pushing it up more than retail investors. I definitely have been watching them here, um, uh, duking it out hardcore. Um, definitely, there's a lot of big money whale interest that, it, that is wanting to push it one way or the other. And uh, there is, you know, as far as in the whale room, there's definitely a lot of passion going on right now. And big money being long, short, and lost and gained. Okay, so uh, four hour chart here, uh, starting to fit way back on like the 21st, 21st of July. Um, it looks like we definitely went below the 618 pocket here, um, but now we're kind of just getting back into it. That would be a great place to be, as you can see here. Um, definitely, the 618 po pocket is a place of previous support and resistance in the chart here on, on as this Fibonacci sequence is drawn. So um, I'm feeling pretty positive about that. Let's see if we can get back into that 618 pocket. That'd be a glorious thing. In general, these four-hour indicators are looking good enough. Um, let's expand this a little bit so you can see it better um, and so I can see it better. As you can see, we're working on getting back in that 618 pocket, the 618 pocket is the uh, 618 fib and the 650 fib. So we're working on getting back above that 650 fib into that golden pocket. I like it. I definitely, uh, I'm digging what I'm seeing. This is good to go. I also like how the bottom of the RSI cave is, is right down there by the uh, 786 fib level. That scary six, uh, that uh, scary um, 37,000, 38,000, 39,000 that many of us have thought is possible and, you know, do have limits. You never know. We still could get a radical stop hunt rolling on or a flash crash. So, because these whales are definitely, as you can see, they ain't playing around right now. So, and I do think they might be one of the kind of part of the, uh, a large percentage of this, uh, of this move might be whale play. So just be aware. It's still very, very volatile. Um, I myself have not taken my limits down here on the seven, eight, six, uh, out. So you never know, you may, uh, you may get a little text and that's your limit filled. So watch out for, uh, 
you know, crazy whale liquidations. I could see uh, a Darth Maul doji, boom, you know, before it starts to move up. Um, because that's how that, that that's how they kind of work on, on those conference calls. But I'm still waiting to get like a Zoom invite, you know, to be part of that. Um, Ethereum versus USDT. It broke above the 200 moving average, not quite as aggressively as Bitcoin, but it did. It looks good. It's riding that 200 moving average. These indicators look okay. Ethereum versus USDT, building momentum, not quite as strong as Bitcoin. We're going to be watching Ethereum versus BTC here. Ethereum versus BTC made a strong move up. It got back into the green Madrid ribbons. I like seeing that. Its indicators are in general strong for this volatile moment. Um, you can definitely see it has been suffering from a you know, lo nice, long, long ass hammering. You know what I mean? Um, and let's see if it can break up with that 10 moving average. Maybe it could recover quicker than Bitcoin. Definitely a play I'd love to be in. Going to be watching this one really, really close. If it begins to have a strong move, I will hop on. Um, also, join the Bitcoin Daily View Telegram chat. Link in the description. If it's not in the description of this YouTube, then go over to BitcoinDailyView.com and uh, find the uh, the uh, Telegram chat. Join there. Um, I do post charts and, well, charts and memes and <laughs> stuff like that um, uh, during the day and during the night. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm not going to quite come on to make a video about something, but definitely I like to uh, post a lot of stuff, both charts and, well, humor. So join the team. Come in for the big win. All right. Ethereum versus BTC. Going to be watching this really close. Definitely I'll be in Telegram um, now posting a, a chart about that if it begins to look like a play. All right. Uh, Sol versus USDT. It definitely made a move with Bitcoin. Hit that tenant moving average. Got rejected. Indicators look good. It is still in play. It's got green Madrid ribbons. I like that. Or green, basically EMAs, as they say. You can find that over at BitcoinDailyView.com. Just search for Madrid and you will see it. Um, it is a nice indicator when all the EMAs are red, it's not so good when they are green. It is good when you get a blue diamond like this, that means bam, it's go time. It means they've all flipped green and that's a wonderful thing to see. So let's do this with Sol versus USDT. I want to do Sol versus BTC. A lot of Sol versus BTC traders out there and people who, who want that deal to happen. Uh, definitely push today. Got at the top of the RSI cave, got rejected. It's kind of still far from the attempt moving average, but I would say this chart's looking stronger than it has been looking. You know, it has not done a higher high yet. So far, it's just kind of like lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Yeah. But um, let's keep vigilant. This definitely might be a play. Let's keep watching. If uh, Bitcoin continues to recover, there's a good chance that uh, Sol versus USDT will become a good play. It'll break about that tenant moving average and start moving up. Uh, also, uh, Sol versus BTC. Uh, I do know um, some people, uh, actually, i got to be honest with you, myself included, who do have a bag of Sol versus BTC, which they would love to get out of the red one day um, before the next damn pull shift. All right, with that said, X. Um, SXP versus USDT. I have no idea what SXP is, but I saw it on my scanner come up. This is a play that I like. Look at that. Bam. This thing has been just dumping, 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 just made a strong move above. Well, let's say a move above the tent moving average. Its indicators look good. Directional index is in the green. ADX is right around 16, 17. Wait for it to be about 2023. 20, uh, squeeze indicators firing off towards the positive side of things. I like seeing that. KRI is in the green. Um, st stochastic RSI and uh, which I said about Lazy Bear show maybe we're a little bit played out right now. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle for it too. Also, the mid rib ribbons, all the EMAs all turn green. I like that. So, SXP, not SPX, but SXP versus USDT. Um, if this guy can hold that 200 moving average, it definitely uh, looks like it could be uh, a play. So, keeping an eye on SX. P versus USDT. Um, is there an SXP versus BTC? There is on Binance and KuCoin and Bittrex, an exchange that I actually kind of like over there in Seattle. Um, you know, it's a company where all the guys are, you know, kind of have beards, they're chubby, they drive like, uh, you know, Outbacks or Foresters, and they wear like Birkenstocks with socks. And anyway, they're a fun group. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, 
SXP versus BTC. Check it out. It did break above the two moving average, but it has not quite gotten traction above it. Indicators don't look too bad. It pushed pretty hard. It's going to have to go sideways a little bit. If it doesn't get rejected or if it can ride the bottom of this two moving average or start to kind of flirt with it, definitely SXP versus BTC, SXP versus USDT. These are both rather interesting trades, something to keep an eye on as we recover. Soul, S-O-U-L versus BTC, which is a Phantasma, a very popular project, as you can see. Firing off lots of blue uh, diamond merit badges and blue and purple square, oh, pink square merit badges. It's really kind of dry humping that, uh, that student moving average and the 314. Indicators look somewhat neutral with an air of positivity to me. Watch this one for a powerful move up. Um, if Bitcoin begins to recover, I mean, basically this thing is on fire. It was moving up, making lots of money, doing really, really, really quite well. And if we actually do a little, let's check this uh, this out here. So if you look at that 200 moving average break, if you hopped in there, you probably would have sold here. I mean, so it probably wouldn't have been a big play. But um, if you'd hopped in, I mean, this thing is made up to like you know 75%. So you even could have been like, oh, I'm out and then gotten back in about here. And you'd have been like, I don't know, like 50%. This is an easy 50% trade. I mean, it's it's a nice looking trade. Soul versus BTC. I think it's only on Binance as far as I know. Where are you? Yeah, but oh, I'm sorry. Soul versus BTC is on KuCoin. Definitely get yourself your KuCoin uh, login going on. It does work for US users without a VPN. It's nice. I do all my trades there through three commas. So it works with three commas very well. I like it. It offers futures and things like that. I'll put a link. Um, if I only already have one, I'll put one over at Bitcoin Daily View and start putting it in the show notes because KuCoin, um, as Binance has become more hostile to, towards US users, KuCoin is one that I'm using to, uh, it's got a lot of pairs on it. It's one that I'm definitely um, using. KuCoin is becoming more of an exchange that I use daily. One of those ones I've had, you know, a log on for for like five years and, you know, I've never really used it. Had like $5 in Bitcoin on it, you know, and now I'm starting to actually really hammer on that thing. So um, watch this one here, you know, uh, uh, Sol versus BTC. I like it. This thing could definitely uh, take off. Keep a close look on that. Let's look at Seoul versus USDT. That's on KuCoin also. What do you got there? Definitely, I, I like this one here. Seoul versus USDT made a strong break above the student moving average. That's I like that. It seems to be holding it. Indicators look good. Um, and also, if we like a Seoul versus, you know, could we actually, um, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on Seoul. Just, you know, uh, it's pretty darn volatile, but, like I say, uh, Phantasma is, is quite the happening project. Just keep an eye on this one. It's worth watching Soul versus USDT and Soul versus BTC. Definitely something that could do another 50% uh, run, no problem. With that said, not financial advice, entertainment purposes only. Always, this is high octane speculation. I'm a crazy dude in this garage. So anyway, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to waste one moment. Okay, it's gonna be, just, let me waste just a, one little moment here. Let's actually, I know this is a little bit nutty. Let's actually go from here. Let's go way back here and do a FIB retracement over all this time. I know that people say that it's this FIB's invalidated, but well, you know, hey, make your own damn YouTubes then. Um, with that said, uh, it's right here at that five FIB line. And you can see this really fits. Look at how this thing has definitely bounced and played around here in the 618 uh, FIB level. I like that. So dot five respectable place to bounce definitely a 200 moving average bounce above right there let's watch soul versus usdt let's watch soul versus btc um definitely i mean this 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 is a strong looking chart let's do that same kind of crazy uh fib sequence let's do that like that where are we at here uh it's kind of in no man's land here i don't quite have a good sticky let me try it about here. Okay, it could be a 382 bounce. Yeah, you know, it doesn't quite fit as well here. Um, so we will not belabor that. But um, definitely against USDT, especially rally around here, BTC here, this is definitely a, a, could be a play. I'm watching Seoul versus BTC. Sorry, I will not belabor it. Um, it. It might be a good play. At your own risk, check it out. Uh, okay, Flux versus BTC. Sorry, I, I found the document, a good article on this thing. Um, I need to actually uh, read through it again, and I will present that to you guys just so you understand why I'm kind of excited about Flux versus BTC. 
I mean, I could kind of do a Google right now and I could be like flux, um, uh, Nvidia. Yeah. Flux Nvidia. You're going to see it like right here. Uh, flux partners with Nvidia to bring web three to the next level. Um, I mean, there you go. Uh, flux partners with Nvidia to bring uh, web three to the next level. This is rather exciting. I'm going to take this and I will um, post this in uh, the Bitcoin Daily View Telegram right now. Bam. And also the uh, live chat link. Boom. So I will read that and uh, I will um, kind of present it to you a little bit better because it is actually a rather interesting project. And I'll leave it right here by Flux for tomorrow. All right. So anyway, Flux, uh, I like what I'm seeing here. Um, it definitely had a run up. It came down, uh, couldn't find support on the 200, bounced off the 314, broke above the 200 moving average, came down, bounced off of it. Now it's kind of like bouncing between the 200 and the 314. This is flux versus BTC. Um, the 314 and the 200 are very, very tight right now, but we are above. We were above the 200 moving average and the 314. Now we're below them. Um, is there any way to kind of get some sanity here? Could we do anything? You know, we could. Let's just for fun. This is, uh, you know, me and the fibs. Um, Let's actually rock it like this. Let's just do a fib right here. Bam. Let's see how that looks. Yep. Yeah, indefinitely. It's playing at a fib level. 382 fib level. I kind of dig that. That that certainly works. You know, it might, might be bouncing at a logical spot. Let's do a fib from right here. A fib from right there, which actually is definitely a, a, a proper way to do it. Um, we had we this downwards trend here kind of would um you know, and validate a fib before it, but you got to play these things a couple of different ways and see how they fit. Um, so this fib here, it's a good spot. I love it. It's a 314 bounce, very powerful run up after, after a dump. Um, look where we're at. We are right out. We are, we are hanging out right here on the 200 moving average, the, the white moving average. And we're also hanging out um, right there in the 618 golden pocket for flux versus BTC. Nothing about flux versus BTC where can we play that Binance, KuCoin and CoinX. I don't know anything about CoinX. If anybody knows about CoinX, like let me know. You know, but uh Binance and KuCoin, I'd imagine you're on one of those. Um so flux versus BTC. I like it. This is actually a nice spot to be. Let's see if we can get a break above the 618. If we do, I'm going to feel pretty positive about it, especially with the uh, Blue Diamond Merit Badges, the Blitzes, as we call them. That's a blockchain education thing, by the way. Um, and the uh, pink uh, uh, squares, um, it's a blockchain education thing, too. So um, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I like it. Flux versus USD versus USD on, on Binance. Vernas, okay, Flux versus USDT on Binance, CoinX, Bitrex. That's cool. I like that it's on Bitrex. So my, uh, I do like the Bitrex exchange, actually. Like I had mentioned earlier, a um, <laughs> bunch of, you know, <laughs> Birkenstock and socks wearing <laughs> mouth breathers <laughs> in Seattle <laughs> driving their Foresters. Anyway, Flux versus USDT. Um, it's looking good. I like it. Uh, definitely... Made a break above the two moving average today, hit the 314 and the RSI cave top, got rejected, came down, but appears to have bounced off back off that two moving average. This thing is shaping up kind of strong. I like what I'm seeing. These indicators are not the best ever. Um, wait for this ADX to get a little higher, about 20 at least. Wait for some green in the directional index. Squeeze indicators looking good. KRI is in the right spot. Stochastic RSI is turning up. Wait till not by Lazy Bear shows a good spot too. So let's watch this guy. Um, and like I say, uh, um, it, it, it's doing big things. Um, definitely this thing, I, I'm watching it. I know I'm kind of doing high octane speculation in part. Well, this chart doesn't look that bad, but also the NVIDIA deal, um, just, and, you know, Flux and NVIDIA Web 3.0, dude, that's just, that's just, if there's a such thing as if speculation, if speculative, you know, basically on, on, on deals and stuff like that can have any value at all, this does this is going to have value so um let's check it out before we go we're still holding strong above that tenant moving average i like what i'm seeing on the 45 minute chart uh 15 minute chart looks really nice daily chart beautiful green candle let's see if we can close an another green candle here that's gonna be wonderful the uh, this is this is kind of like the start of the show right here the tangent of the daily macd has turned positive that's going to create a lot of confidence especially if we continue to stay 
um, above the 45 minute 200 moving average. If we can see up there at 12 hours, I think that's definitely going to show a lot more uh, confidence in the market. I am still trying to find a good way to show Bitcoin explicit trading volume. And I ain't found something that works like um, that side I used to use, which seems to not work anymore. Anyway, with that said, if anybody knows a way to see Bitcoin trading volume above, I mean, on the big exchanges, then certainly let me know. I would certainly like to uh, show that it would tell us a lot. I mean, being able to see it today would be really, really kind of cool. Although I bet it's low. So watch out uh, for volatility because um, when uh, Bitcoin trading volume is low, definitely that aims towards vol volatility. It kind of lends towards these uh, red candles you see right here. Um, so look at that $1.3 million buy, $1 million buy, $2.3 million buy, $2.2 million buy, $1.1 million buy. Then we got some asshole here, $1.3 million sell. <laughs> um, anyway, we've got some big numbers coming in. Definitely there is a desire to um, get big, uh, watching the uh, bulls and bears, uh, the whales uh, kind of duke it out right here. Um, you know, this would lend to being, I need to actually see how this thing pulls. This would lend to be kind of a uh, retail trading volume more so than, I guess it wouldn't really be OTC, would it? I need to learn more about this indicator, this, this cool ass site here. But if this is retail, that would make sense uh, what the price action is doing. And uh, anyway, like I said, I'd love to see that Bitcoin trading volume explicitly based on retail trades. I have a feeling that the uh, movement right now might be a little bit more whale influence than I like. And we might see a little bit less um, uh, volume than I would like to see to be a little bit more confident. But let's just, like I say, watch this indicator. Watch that 45-minute um, um, chart or the hourly chart. Um, you know, If we can stay above the uh, 200 moving average, we like say 12 to 24 hours, we're going to be all about you know, mad gains and we'll be like, it's going to be beautiful. So let's see if it holds. It may, it may dump by the time you see this. Um, anyway, with that said, for every Bitcoin Satoshi, you own a piece of shit, terrible globalist cries. You give them a bad day. You act up their hemorrhoids uh, and they have to like drink a bunch of insure, you know, and then they, and then like they, they can't have a good job at their, like a good time at their we perverse weird like you know thing they do whatever that you know they 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 can't go to the uh hidden room of the uh, secret society club uh stone lodge up in the mountains and do weird things because their their uh, depends are all messy and they they had to bring a bunch of geritol and they're like dehydrated and off they go to the er because you know they got the flu and thought they were you know thought that um whatever some strange thing they were taking was going to make them immune and it didn't anyway <laughs> now you know the rest of the story so get some bitcoin stoshis and uh and, and help put it into the uh, globalist menace <laughs> anyway take care bye bye